Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of In the Pit with Lobo Tigre. Our victim of the day is actually an old friend of mine, Lawrence Ralston, who, uh, Lawrence is a former peer, maybe a former competitor, newsletter writer, uh, and when I first started in the business, despite that, uh, he actually kind of took me a bit under his wing and explained a lot to me. Lawrence, unlike many of my esteemed peers, myself included, is actually a geologist. And so he had a lot of, of wisdom to share with me, so I always have time for Lawrence. And now he's kind of gone to the other side of the table, perhaps to the dark side, we'll find out. Uh, Lawrence, you're now CEO of Mountain Boy Minerals. Uh, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, look, it's, it's been a few years now since I've been beginning this uh, transition back into the mining space. And uh, remember, before I was doing the newsletter, I was uh, involved in managing junior mining companies. So actually going back to what I was doing before, which is uh, in, in spite of all the fun I had with the newsletter, I, I love being involved with the, uh, the, the junior mining space on this side. It, it's exciting, it's a treasure hunt, and uh, I'm really pumped about this project. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So why don't you give us an overview then of what you're working on. Mountain Boy Minerals, it's not a new story, though you're the new sheriff in town, so tell us you know, what you're doing and why. Well, the, the story goes way back when I was doing the newsletter and, and I'm talking 10 or 12 years ago when I looked at this project, I was blown away by the geology. They're getting spectacular intercepts in, in various places across the property. And at that point, their focus was primarily on, on getting a mine into production. So they weren't really standing back and looking at the big picture. And the other part of it is they only had a small property position. So recognizing that geological potential, as I'm getting back into the mining space, uh, it was high on my list to try to get involved in the company. So an, another guy that your readers uh, may be familiar with, Mark Brown and I, stepped in, took control of the company, and brought together a geological team. We assembled a fairly substantial property position, and most importantly, we pulled together all the information that a number of different companies had assembled over a period of a couple of decades actually uh, on the property and what became the expanded property we looked at it from a big picture geological point of view and very clearly this pointed to being a big geological system so then we went out in the field we had two years in the field uh, filled in the gaps in the data set and expanded on the data set, we made some really, really important uh, advances in, in the geological understanding. And in particular, when you've got a big hydrothermal system like this, the previous thinking was that this was effectively leakage or a spillover from the premier district, which is located on the other side of the mountain. And we're looking at the spectacular results, very high grade results, and, and the nature of the, uh, the geology, the, the texture of the rocks and, and a number of other indicators, it said, no, 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 this has come from a nearby source. So I tasked our geos with working down the mountainsides and the cliffs and poking through the Devil's Club along the, uh, the river. They found an intrusion that had never previously been recognized. We've extended that now for multi-kilometers. We've age-dated it. It's absolutely the same age, the same mineralogy as the driving force in the Premier District. So now we've, we've got a complete geological model, including the intrusion that provided the mineralizing fluids and the heat source. And so that the whole cluster of high-grade historic occurrences in the old mines and all of that, now it makes sense. It, it ties together geologically. So next step, of course, is to get out and test it with the drill bit. The truth machine, I get it. Okay, um, and before we get into that more specifically, I just want to clear up for the readers. Your American Creek project has nothing to do with American Creek resources, or is it the same creek that runs through it? Ah, you know, I'm, I'm sure the company was named for the creek. Uh, the creek goes way back to the days when the BC Alaska border was kind of shifting day by day. <laughs> and at one point, this, I believe, fell onto the American side. Huh. And, and the, the border finally got settled. It's a, a few kilometers west of where we are. So we are in, in BC at this moment, but the Alaska border is very nearby 
and I, I think that's the uh, the history of, of the name. Right, but but, it, it, but the project it, it, is not connected to, it's not adjacent to, or a play on uh, American Creek Resources, is it? Uh, American Creek has a project south of here, and they have a project north of here, but there is no connection between what we're doing and the company with the same name. All right, and again, but I, I have questions about the project, excuse me. Um, have questions about the project, but uh, one more point of clarification. I noticed on your presentation it says that you're a prospect generator. Is that still the intent? Do you are you looking to JV these kinds of things, or are you so excited that you're going to drill this thing yourself? Um, very good point. And um, look, we've got four other projects, and one of them's already in a joint venture. Um, we we funded our work over the last two years by selling a minority interest in a project that had been a joint venture. And we've got three other projects where we are actively searching for joint venture partners. We've got um, fantastic results. They could be company makers, but this is our focus at this time. All right, so the idea is joint venture the other ones and use that to fund the, the top priority project yourself? Exactly right. Okay, all right. And so this top priority project, I, I get it, it's, uh, it's the same property, but in a way a different project. You're coming at it with a whole different geological theory, you're looking for something else. Um, but we still have to talk about the history a little bit. How the heck does somebody drill five meters of five kilos of silver? And you know, I saw that on, on, the, on the press, uh, sorry, not the press release, the presentation is like, wow, how, how does somebody not follow up on that? What, what the heck happened? Well, in, in fact, there were at least six hits of better than a kilo uh, in that drilling campaign. But putting it into perspective, they had built a road up to the property. Uh, when, when it was mined, they were using pack horses to get raw ore down the mountainside. So these guys put a road in. They dragged up what was actually an underground production drill rig. And, uh, and they were drilling short holes. So they they were following up on the, on the past production. They knew they were going to get a hit there. Um, <clears throat> but in order to get deeper on it, um, if, if anybody goes to the presentation, there's, there's a slide that shows a panoramic view of the side of the mountain, and on the same slide is the cross-section. You can see that these veins dip directly into a steep mountain. So to get down dip on that area where they had the hits would have required going higher on the mountainside where they didn't have road access and and then drilling a very long hole just because of, of the geometry of the situation. The fact that it, it dips more or less straight into this, this steep mountainside. So in, in order to drill it down dip, you need a helicopter supported drill program. You need a much more powerful drill rig. You need to get higher on the mountain and drill a longer hole that's going to hit it down dip. And that's exactly what we're doing. Okay. And so they wanted to go to production. They got these big hits and they said, okay, we, don't, we, we know we've got something here, but we need something else around it to add tons and, uh, and volume to this, this program. So they drilled a few of the other veins. They got some good results. They got, you know, 400 gram kind of numbers but they just weren't able to get down dip on that super high grade zone that they hit. Now, our program is gonna go down dip on, on the, the high grade vein, but it's also gonna test some of the other veins. Uh, we've got the geological crew in the field at this moment that are basically looking at a, a combination of logistics and vein orientation in order to determine exactly where we need to set up the rigs and how to orient those rigs to give us the best probability of hitting high grade zones down dip on, on those surface showings. Okay, so I absolutely get, you know, I just asked why wasn't this followed up on, so I absolutely get following up on that known mineralization, but part of the arm waving here is this is district scale, this could be really big, we have this whole new uh, interpretation, right, with this whole yes. new driver here. So. What's the basis for that? Have you found similar outcrops, you know, kilometers away, or is it geophysics, or, or what's the basis for your district scale claim? 
Well, there are surface occurrences extending over the entire uh, length of our property. Um, so several kilometers. Now, just immediately south of Mountain Boy, uh, there's the Red Cliff Mine. And Red Cliff was operated in the early 1900s. It was drilled more recently. There are some very high-grade gold numbers that have come out of the Red Cliff Mine. And then going north, there's a series of I'm reluctant to call them mines. There were there were rat holes where the old timers were, were chasing this material. They they found the super high grade stuff on surface, but it was difficult to access. They they had to take raw ore down the mountainside on, on pack horses. So we've got all these documented occurrences that extend four kilometers south to the, the red cliff mine, at least four kilometers further north through the recently acquired property we call Dorothy. And there's a bunch of these old rat holes. There's more recent work that was done. Dorothy was held for a couple of decades by private individuals. And basically they did enough work each year to keep the claims good standing. It's never been drilled. So we've, we've got the evidence of the old workings. We've got some records of the old workings. We've got surface samples showing very high grade silver and gold values going for kilometers to the north. And there's all sorts of interesting things up here, just a few hundred meters away from the mountain boy was another old rat hole where they were pulling up multi-percent copper, the, the gym showing. And, you know, in, in, in the middle of, of this high grade silver, we, we've got the copper and we're trying to figure out exactly what that represents. And then if we go to the west, which takes us over the top of the mountain and down on the premier side in, into the uh, Salmon Valley where, where the premier district is. We're literally looking down into the big Missouri pit, which was one of the bigger producers in the, uh, the premier district. And if you look off in the distance, you can actually see the, the premier mill from our property. So there, um, glaciers had recently retreated. The geological crew saw the alteration from the helicopter. They got dropped off. They spent a few days looking at that showing. They've identified a, an alteration zone extending for at least 450 meters. It goes under the talus on one end and under the ice on the other. And they got surface samples of 28 grams of gold and 1,200 grams of silver on surface from a showing that nobody had ever had uh, boots on before. So that's, that's another one of our showing. So altogether, we've, we've definitely got multi-kilometers. We've got the, uh, the intrusion of exactly the same age as the premier porphyry, giving us the, the driving force. So it, certainly it's arm waving at this stage until we get the, the proof, but there is compelling evidence that there's something here of real substance. All right, and uh, just, to, just to try to clarify this in my mind, is it your thesis that all of this connects to one thing, one giant thing, or is it your thesis that these are all signs of some center somewhere that you're going to find and, and the hunt is on for that center of this activity? Well, look, the Premier District is the best analog. And Premier, over about an 80-year mine life, produced 2 million ounces of gold, 50 million ounces of silver. It came from a number of deposits. There were several deposits right around where the premier mill is. There was silver coin in Big Missouri to the north. There was the Dilworth uh, uh, deposit. That's the model that we have in mind. So a, a large district over several kilometers that hosts several um, gold silver deposits. And, and these things also contain lead zinc and gold, uh, but several deposits spread over a number of kilometers. So the mountain boy, there, there's a cluster of veins there. We, we know we have seven separate veins within a few hundred meters around the, uh, the original mountain boy mine. And then we see the, the veins trending off to the north. We, we know we've got the, the red cliff to the south. And then we've got this new occurrence we call the wolf moon uh, over the mountain. So these are, it, it's not, it's not going to be one humongous deposit but it's going to be a cluster of deposits, exactly like the Premier District, uh, which will add up to a, a pretty substantial amount of gold and silver. 
I'm, I'm glad to hear that. It sounds a little bit more credible than, oh, the whole thing's <laughs> full of gold. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and Golden Triangle, there's a lot of high grade showings all around there. And that doesn't mean every patch of uh, moss that you turn up, you know, has gold underneath. So how did the dots connect? And I guess one way of putting it is you're going to start with the low hanging fruit of where they drilled off that, that uh, five meters of five kilos at, at the old Mountain Boy area. Uh, what will you learn from that that'll tell you about where to find anything else? Like suppose you're successful and great. Okay, now we have something here. Does that tell you anything about what's on the other side of the mountain? I mean, given your premier analog, it seems like you still have to do all the research, all the boots on the ground and figure out what's going on in each one of your showings. Oh, ab absolutely. We'll get a lot of information about the mountain boy area from the several holes that we're going to drill in that area. So we'll know more about uh, the geometry, wh which is really important in this situation because th this is structurally controlled veins and we, we need to sort out uh, the orientation of the veins. So if nothing else, we're going to learn that. And it's like a lot of vein deposits where y you get the hot spots along the veins. It's not like it's right. fully distributed the full length of the vein. So we're learning day by day uh, about what the driving forces are, what are the, the mechanisms for creating uh, mineralization in one area, preferentially over another area. Is it structural? Is it, you know, it, it, there are different stratigraphic units here. And uh, we're, we're trying to pull all that together and learn more about the, uh, what, what the driving force is to create the mineralization in a particular area. Okay, fair enough. And this will be drill tested this year. Um, before we come back to that, let's just real quick touch on the other projects. You say that you have some joint ventures going. Are any of the other ones going to see work this year or what news flow? There will be news flow on all of the projects. Um, Red Cliff, we have a 35% interest. Another company is the operator. Um, we're working with them to generate a, a program there. Um, look, the, the BA, um, there was 180 drill holes on the main BA showing. It outlined a very substantial mineralized area. And there's a lot of work yet to be done there. Um, tracking that along strike, it, it goes for kilometers on strike, and surface samples have included more than a kilo of silver on surface. Um, and then the, the surprise, a few drill holes up there, a lot of work by a lot of people. All of these properties, we're going to have boots on the ground this year. We're going to advance the geological story as far as we can. We'd love to get joint venture partners signed up, but it's more likely we're going to be escorting a series of different companies across the property this year that will do due diligence and put a deal in place to work on them next year. All right. Okay. So uh, back to the the main show there at American Creek and Mountain Boy. Um, we're going to be testing that one area where we have the, the low hanging fruit. And is that it? Or do you have a regional program no. planned for that project this year? Well, it, clearly, number one, low hanging fruit. Uh, number two, will be to track those known veins to the north. And when that drilling was done previously, the company didn't own the property to the north. Right. So we, we've got known veins, we've got lots of work that was done on surface on the veins, but no drilling has ever been done on those veins. So we will be testing the northward extension of the veins. And then the other one is, is the new discovery, the wolf moon, on the west side of the ridge. And <clears throat> part of our program over the next few weeks will be to do an IP survey. <clears throat> These veins are, uh, they, they really light up with IP. Hmm. ASCOP has used it on the, in, in the Premier District very effectively. So we're gonna be doing IP that will help us track from those very high grade surface uh, occurrences to get the orientation of the veins, and then we'll, we'll try to get the veins down down. Very good. Well, the Lobo and me has to approve of the name of that showing over there. 
So, <laughs> um, so how much is all this going to cost? You're, you're looking to raise some money now, so I won't ask you two embarrassing questions. Let's just assume you're low on cash, you're raising money now, you're raising two million. Is that going to cover all this? Or are you going to need more? Or is the hope to raise more after hitting that low-hanging fruit? Or how far do well, we get our, with, our with the money plan, you're raising? We've, we've got a quarter million in the bank at the moment, which is covering the ongoing program. <clears throat> we also, <clears throat> excuse me, we also have about 700,000 shares of Ascot remaining. And we would love to hang on to those. But to the extent that we need money, we, we have them available. And <clears throat> the $2 million raise will cover the, uh, the budget for the program that we have coming up. On all the properties? Yes. The work on, on the secondary properties is, is going to be the geologists on the ground for a few days. So it's, it's not going to be expensive. Um, but the, the big part of it is going to be the drilling. Right. And we've budgeted that out. And that $2 million will will cover the, uh, the drill program that we have planned. And that will get us a few holes into each of those target areas. Okay. So if we had any viewers out there who were excited by this and wanted to get in on it, is there room for retail at in the private placement? <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> so uh, the short answer is, is yes. Um, you know, the, the share price started moving over the last few days. People are, are becoming aware of what we're doing and, and the, that we have a drill program coming up. So we've had a lot of interest coming in over the last few days. But at this time, we still have room in the placement. And what's in it for them? Is there a warrant? There's a, a share and a half warrant. And the warrant is 40 cents for two years. And there's also a flow through. I don't know if you have any, any Canadian uh, followers. Yes, we do. but Excellent. Um, so it, it's BC super flow through. It's being done at 30 cents. Um, there's no warrant on, uh, on the flow through part of it. Okay, fair enough. All right, so there's an opportunity there and it's not, it, it's, it's not all spoken for yet. Good to know. Uh, I was also, while I was looking at this, I was noticing your share structure is actually pretty tight. 36.7 million shares, only a few warrants and options, or really options. Um, was there a rollback in the past? There, there was a rollback shortly after I got involved. And then... The new sheriff in town. Well, and, and after that, we did the deal where we sold a 20% a interest in silver coin and got... At that point, almost the, the value was almost $4 million worth of Ascot shares. And that has funded our work over the last two years. So we've only done a very small amount of financing. Uh, okay, that starts to make sense. I, I, I get it. So, yeah, and, uh, you know, this uh, figuring out the geology is great for you as a geologist. You get excited about that. But it's not the sort of thing that's going to drive a share price the way drill results would. So really, this is the first time that you're going to be bringing, uh, make or maybe not break is too strong a word, but but you know the kind of uh, results that could really move or fail to move the story here. This is this is what you're planning for this season. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Look, when this thing was drilled in in 2006, the average hole length was 47 meters. <laughs> they, they they barely scratched the surface with it. They they got some great hits, but they didn't have at that point the evidence that it had size potential. They didn't have the property to expand outward, and they didn't have any sense of a geological model. So now we've, we've got the property. We're covered all around. Um, we're going to be drilling deeper holes to give at least the first indication that it has size potential. And we've got a geological model that is telling us that this thing has potential to have size. It's it's like other deposits in the Golden Triangle. I, I, I get that. Where, where I was going with that is, um, I mean, it's, it's interesting to me to see that you, uh, I'm actually giving you a little bit of a freebie here. I'm saying it looks to me like you well manage the uh, share capital structure in the interest of the investors during these sort of quieter years. And now that you're really getting out there with the drills to test it, you know, now's when you're going out and raising the money uh, and that's terrific if you can raise the money uh, with only half a warrant. That shows significant uh, interest there on the, on the principles. Um, but, I, but I have to ask, you know, again, looking at this, and I, 
I don't obsess too much over the share structure, but it's just, it, look, it smacks you in the face. The stock has pretty much doubled over the last month with no news other than a private placement. So, I mean, well, okay, it, gold's up, but it's not up double. I mean, what's, what's up with that? Well, it, look, to, to be fair, um, the share price has doubled from a short-term dip. And, and the short-term dip came about because the, the flow-through private placement that we did in January came free trading end of April and, and, and through May. We, we were eating the, uh, the million shares that we put out in January. So that, that was the reason for the dip. So it was trading in the 20s before, and, and now we're, we're into the 30s. So yes, it's up. Uh, there's a lot of interest building in the Golden Triangle in general. And for the first time, I'm actually getting out and, and beating the bushes a little bit on this. You know, I've kept a low profile over the last couple of years. We've assembled a property, the team, the geological story. And like you say, geological stories don't get people excited. But now we're drilling. And so I'm, I'm getting out. I'm beating the bushes and uh, or beating the drums, I guess, a better way to put it. And, um, and, and people are sitting up and, and taking notice. All right. Fair enough. I, I understand that. So... Uh, if I'm your potential investor here and you're trying to persuade me to invest in your company, I want to know how much of your own skin have you got in the game? How much of your own hard-earned money have you put into this? Um, from my <laughs> net worth and, and perspective, a meaningful amount. It's, uh, it, it's one of my bigger holdings. Um, a large part of it is, is in the stock option side of it. Um, <clears throat> I was, or on paper, I still am the CEO of, of Oramax, so my time was divided between Mountain Boy and Oramax. Over the last few days, um, we've announced a, a change in management of Oramax and a financing in Oramax. I will be stepping aside as the CEO of that one, and I'm going to commit um, pretty much full-time on the Mountain Boy project. I'm committed to making this a success. Okay, all right. So collectively, the, the management and, and directors of Mountain Boy have about 25% of the, the total outstanding. Hmm. And with only you know, 36, 37 million out, that's a pretty significant, uh, pretty significant chunk there. All right, so assuming all goes well, you raise the money, you will raise the money, and you're off to drill. When, when might uh, investors look forward to seeing results? Well, realistically, it's, it's going to be late September into October before we're actually publishing assays. The, the drilling is, is set to start in August. And, and by the time, it, and we've, we've all been through this, everybody thinks, well, we're drilling, the labs can turn it around in a couple of weeks. But, you know, you've, you've got to get a batch of, of core to send in the lab. And before you send it, you, you log it, you split it, you do all kinds of other tests on it, and then you finally get it into the lab, and the lab process starts. So I, I don't want to get unrealistic ex expectations. So let's let's target late September into, into October, and through October and November, um, we'll, we'll be uh, publishing uh, drill results. All right. Um, it's not a normal question I ask, but given the super high grades that you're dealing with in your initial target there, I presume that's really quite distinct from the host rock. You're looking, you know, you know when you're in the vein, and you probably know when you're in very high grade. If you get in a situation where it looks like you've really hit this sucker square on, would that be material enough where you would feel obligated to publish photographs of the drill core and say, you know, assays pending, this is what we have, or would you would you wait until you got the assays? Let, let me check with our uh, lawyers and compliance people on that. <laughs> Uh, um, All right. Look, uh, a lot of companies have, have really put their necks on the line, talking about fantastic results expected from this great-looking core. Um, I, I, I don't want to go down a path that's going to get us into trouble. If we see something that is very clear-cut and very material, but, but but it's hard to know because, like like any precious metal situation, you're looking at a lot of lead, zinc, silver, pyrite. Or, or sorry, let, let's say copper and, and pyrite, which is obvious and it's going to look really um, glittery. But you don't know how much of that is silver or gold. And, and so most likely 
we're going to wait until we get assays before we start, you know, touting uh, the great results <laughs> that we get. Well, that's that's very responsible. I actually I like that answer a lot because uh, you, you're right. You you never know. I have seen, well, you you and I know, but you know, I have seen VG in the core and and over significant lengths, and then it comes back and it's just like nothing. <laughs> So yes. uh, I, I appreciate your, your caution there. Okay. All right, well, I think that's it for my questions. We covered the skin in the game. We know what we're looking for. We know when we're looking for it. So I wish you luck and keep us posted. Okay, really appreciate talking with you, Lobo, and uh, hopefully we can get you onto the property here sometime soon. I'd love to get my boots on the ground. All right, we'll okay, talk about that later. Okay, right, bye.